No pressure. I, I can edit all this out also. So. Oh, it's fine. You could you could leave it on. And say, oh, and here's Ishmael getting situated. Was driving in his car. <laughs> with his uh, laptop open. <laughs> uh, flying through the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, this is not what I was getting. Got the wrong thing. Do Do you play music? Do you play guitar? Uh, I used to. I, I don't think I, I remember it anymore. It's been a long time. Uh huh. But, um, I I do play piano. Nice. Look, all right. I think we should be good. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Oh, it's, it's a good thing I just had finished eating some uh, some food. Uh huh. So if my stomach is happy, then my brain works. When my stomach isn't happy, my brain doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What what kind of food do you typically eat? I mean, what did you just eat? Ah, uh, just chicken and uh and and vegetables. That's it. Nice, nice. I I tend to have a pretty pretty healthy diet. But you're not afraid to eat meat. Ah, uh, no, I'm not. Um, just chicken and and a fish. A fish. Uh huh. Yeah, I tried the vegan thing for a while. Just just I got really weak. Um, yeah. It wasn't working for me. Yeah. I, I tried uh, I tried being a vegetarian for a year and I was hungry twenty four seven I couldn't do it it's too much I was I found myself eating potato chips just to fill my stomach <laughs> yeah I think I went through that phase when I was younger too <laughs> this is before I knew about you know eating healthy yeah. Okay, so wow, you know, thank you so much for everything for what you do. And somebody noted, I, I recently that you know you're so good to give so many interviews to to uh, to us. We're not like you know we're not like superstars. We're not uh, you know we're just regular folks who have YouTube channels. So it's really um, it's just beautiful. It's just you know the whole community that that I see growing, the the star seeds coming together. I think it's. Um, it's just such a, it's such a love thing. It's such a, you know, it's so against, it really is so, you know, you can so easily see it as a, you know, contradiction to the, uh, to the cabal way of doing things. And it's just, we're easing into like another lifestyle. So that the, the kind of things that I really wanted to focus on in this uh, meeting, and again, no pressure, you know, and I, I just want you to feel relaxed and happy and, uh, and me too, you know, um, is really like I'm really more interested in like kind of like the day to day work that we can do, you know, moving forward as as communicators. You know, I'm try I'm building my little community. I'm up to like twenty thousand subscribers now, which is to me it's amazing. I mean, I I can't, I pinch myself sometimes. I mean, I know I could be a lot bigger, but it's it's very you know it's very nice and you know we we meet twice a day, so we have a lot of contact. But I, I want to just like kind of get an idea of like how you see us building the new world. Like, I, like I'm, I'm also like a retired builder. So, you know, I'm thinking of like, you mentioned something about building spiritual communities. And, you know, and I think of like Tartaria and I think of like building, you know, structures that fit in with the environment that, you know, were gardens and fountains and places for children and you know is that the kind of is that i mean you know honestly like right now at this moment i'm looking for like a place to live and it's like it's so it goes so against you know it's just so difficult and i i i'm wondering like how you see this in the future how we're going to live in the future in the, in the near future we're still going to have houses. Uh, our houses are going to be different, though. Uh, they're going to be um, as physical as these houses are, but um, you know they're going to be our ideal home. So, if, if you could imagine what your ideal home is, that's the type of home we're going to be living in. Everyone's going to be able to live in their ideal home. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be just a better world. You know, um, 
there's going to be no more corruption, no more lies, no more, you know, halves and halves nots, you know, no more injustices. Uh, in, in a way, there's, you know, people are going to learn how to govern themselves. Uh, people are going to understand what true self-sovereignty is because of, of the type of uh, world, you know, that we're going to be in where there is no more evil so if there's no more evil then obviously there, there there will be no more policemen or military you know everything's gonna all all the arms are gonna be dismantled um, and, that, and that's how advanced civilizations exist you know they don't really need police you know they they every citizen in those worlds is a government unto themselves it's it's what self-sovereignty is you know the best government is self-government but in a in a type of a egalitarian system where where everyone is is adherent students of, of the Christ consciousness, of unity consciousness, of, of you know, of brother uh, brotherhood and sisterhood, uh, of uh, you know, being of service to others. So when you have everybody in that state of mind, you know, there is no need for for physical social structures like we have them here. You know, it's just a better world. How, how do we make that transition? I mean, in other words, how do we eliminate evil? Really, how do we? How do people come to see that? It doesn't pay, you know, that, that, you know, how do we get people on board? Well, everything is a reflection of, of ourselves. So uh, in order to defeat the evil in the external world, we have to first defeat the evil within us, which is pretty much the ego. You know, once we've succumbed and, and tamed the ego, uh, then we defeated e evil in, in terms of like within ourselves, you know, because ego is is the evil aspect of every single one of us. You know, we all go through that ego, um, you know, battle with the ego. You know, the ego is always trying to uh, make us compete with others. And um, that's just part of this old world. So if we if we want to live in a better world, we, we have to first learn how to master, you know, ourselves. And once we master ourselves, then we live in a like mind world with others that have also mastered themselves. And that's what a fifth dimensional society is. It's a world where every citizen in that reality has has learned how to master themselves and has tamed the ego. Because at that point, you know, there is no more injustices. Everyone's living under one universal uh, understanding of, of oneness, and, you know, seeing sacredness in all living things. So in terms of, so I understand, so in terms of our own personal development, we want to tame the ego. I mean, this is very much in line with the, the prophecies from Judaism of the era of Mashiach. I mean, that, that's, you know, that's to me the, the exciting thing is when different thought streams connect. And, you know, I'm, I'm seeing this whole process. I mean, I, unbeknownst to the Jewish community, for some reason, they're not really noticing it. But Mashiach, the idea of Messiah, I mean, you could call it Christ consciousness, we call it Messiah, Mashiach. Uh, it's the same thing. But so let's say in terms of community evolution, as we evolve and claim our own sovereignty, sovereignty um, how does that spread? Is there is there a separation or is there, you know, like, is it that the people who can't do it are just going to be taken away or is it that they're going to, we're all going to like spread the love and, and somehow it'll, you know, everyone will get it. Uh, I believe that, yes, you know, it's, it's going to start with, with us. And then uh, once enough of us are in that mentality, that's going to allow everyone else to be in that mentality automatically but uh, for the people that are evil they're going to be eliminated when the solar flash takes place so only the wicked are going to be taken out this time you know the unwicked which is the majority of the world um, you know they're, they're going to have an opportunity to to go into the next stage by virtue of the hundred monkeys effect which is what we call the Maharishi effect right once you have enough people thinking the same things then it allows everybody else within that group of species to think the same. So we're um, we're raising the frequency by merely just doing what we came here to do, and so we we are affecting the collective every day in our lives with what we do, how we think, and how we treat others. 
So, so at some point there'll be kind of, I mean, this is very much in line with the Jewish uh, thought with, and Zion, you know, the idea of Zion, that um, evil will be completely eradicated. It won't, there won't be any evil. And in fact, our sages say that we'll look fondly back at the time where there was evil because we had more what to do. You know, we had, we had a mission. But when we get to this, the other side, it'll be so peaceful that we won't really have, we won't be fighting evil anymore. So you're saying that basically we're going to reach, reach a point where it'll kind of like spread. It'll just be a spreading of forth of this kind of energy. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what they call a critical mass. And we're almost there you know many of many people are waking up accelerating like never before and okay so let me go back to the house thing how how will that physically take place how will we transform our houses let's say you know into more sophisticated dwelling places that really support our new lifestyles let's say well, if you're in the fourth dimension, you're just gonna you're gonna use a replicator, and all you gotta do is like a 3D printer, put exactly in detail how you want your house, and that replicator is gonna manifest that house for you. Uh, if you're in the fifth dimensional reality, then you will be the replicator. Your body is a natural technology where you're gonna be creating at the speed of light with your thoughts, and that's how you're gonna manifest anything you want in the in the physical realm. So, what, what? Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So if you if you want a particular house, then then all you got to do is think it, and you know, and use your imagination to see what what you want that house to look like inside and out, uh, the type of atmosphere you want in that house. Whether you know if you want it to be full of plant life, full of you know nature, then that's that's the type of re home that you're going to manifest by virtue of that. You know? Because in fifth dimensional reality, uh, our thoughts manifest the speed of light. And that's why it's important to learn how to control your thoughts while we're still here in the you know, third, fourth dimension. Because once we enter the fifth dimension, people are going to be co-creating at, at, at the speed of light. <laughs> and it's very important to master that now before you know, we start creating things we don't, we don't want. <laughs> right. So, so what, I'm, what I'm thinking is like, I, I want to start taking more notes so I can... Um, that it, it could be like, because I'm, I'm thinking like, you know, I want a house that that radiates with nature and it, it, it has like a musical component and light component and it's a healing unit and it's a it's a, it's a you know has an energy of love and in the current our current state of like 3d awareness everything is kind of like separate you know like you have you would have your music system you would have your so i guess what i'm thinking maybe i'm thinking for you but that we're going to reach a, a kind of a unity consciousness where we're not going to have all these like separate boxes so that the creational process won't be like, okay, I need, you know, air conditioning. I mean, is that, a, is that all like a cabal kind of influence that everything is like separate? Is that what they've done to our consciousness? Yes. Yes. We're, we're moving from the, the state of separation to seeing everything as interconnected, at least all living things. So we're, we're moving from a duality to a, a type of unity uh, perception as we move into the fifth dimension. So, so in terms of like, you know, I, I'm a builder, so I'm, a, I'm just a little stuck on this. So in terms of, let's say I'm building a house, I won't have to think separately about like, well, gee, what kind of windows do I want? What kind of heating and air conditioning do I want? You know, what, kind, what do I, it's like, it's kind of like, I'll just have a general like feeling for the kind of, kind of environment, the kind of thought space that I'll be creating and it'll kind of accumulate into that unity consciousness is that correct i mean is that yes absolutely that's how it works and and so too with with building communities it's kind of like we're we're going to be taking out the the separation between people we're going to be taking out the separation between technologies you know i mean the more I, the more you know the more i like think about these things the more i realize like i mean they say the cabal 
did everything to make to make us think separately. Like they they made us wait at stop signs. They made us fill out forms. They made it, you know, they made everything like a separate and difficult procedure. You know, we like like ownership. Like what about owning land? Will that be a thing of the past? No, because in the new world, everything will be owned by everyone equally. All the resources are going to be no one's going to own anything privately or centralized. Everything's going to be an egalitarian type of system where everything is is um, not owned by anyone. Does that so make sense? If, what what if I say I want to imagine my my um, my new house on top of this mountain and somebody else also wants is doing it at the same time. So in that war, in that realm, we could both somehow become together as one. It, it wouldn't there wouldn't be a separation. Is how do you envision that? Yes, you know, if you guys have similar thoughts and you guys are co-creating something together, then that's what you guys are going to manifest. If you guys are thinking the same thing, but everyone's going to have the opportunity to manifest whatever they they desire in the fifth dimensional earth. It, it's almost like we're, we're all going to be sharing the world collectively, but yet we're also going to be existing in our own worlds. Yeah. So we'll be together. We'll, we'll be unified, but it will be a kind of a a unity that's separate. Like we, we'll still have our own sense of self, but we'll be. We won't. Maybe is could I could I would it would it be proper to say that we won't mind being around others because we'll realize that they are really just reflections of ourself. Uh, yes. Yes, in the new world, we see uh, we see the Christ in everyone. We no longer see people as separate from us. We see them as expressions of the one. The so really, really we're talking about unity consciousness, which is somewhat difficult for us to imagine in terms of the 3D world. But or it seems that like our, our preparation, like our, our work on the Internet is helping us make that transition. Do you think that's true? Absolutely. Yes. Everything that we're all doing in spreading information and helping the collective and raising the consciousness of the planet is all leading to, towards this grand shift of ages that's going to lead to the, you know, the age of Messiah, the Aquarian age, millennium, the golden age. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay. So I'm, I'm just trying to think, um, build So I had, I had separate questions um what about um let's see how to make transitions so we're making the transition communication will be now how do we make the transition from like separation to telepathy let's say well once we begin to use more of our genetic material we're gonna our telepathic channels are gonna once again be reconnected and that has a lot to do with the activation of our pineal gland our pineal gland and our uh, pituitary gland uh, those glands within our brain allow us to use more than 10 percent of our full brain power and when we do that we begin to communicate with each other via telepathy yeah how cool and okay so so the solar flash how much of the solar flash is going to, you have mosquitoes you have uh, yeah, it's just it's a few little flies. It's okay. <laughs> uh, that's what happens when you're at a park. <laughs> um, so th the solar flash is also predicted by Judaism. They say mm -hmm. that the sun will be will get what's called a bris. In other words, the sun will be circumcised. It will like the outer layer will be removed, which is kind of sounds like a solar flash. M my question is, how much of the transition? is dependent on our efforts and how much is dependent on, you know, this kind of solar flash that like we talk in Hasidus about the concept of from below to above and above to below that some things God just gives to us and some things, you know, are better manifested by ourselves. It will be like kind of, how, how do you see that? It's 50, 50, um, the sun and us were communicating at a you know energetic level so as we do the work as we do the clearing uh, as we 
raise our frequencies, uh, the sun emits more light. And so when enough of us are done that, when enough of us have done the clearing, um, then, then that's when the sun will, will, under, will receive the signal that it is time for, for the transformation. But it's waiting for most of us to do the work, yes. Oh, that's so interesting. Okay, so, and, and the work is really just to work on our, basically work on our ego, would you say? Work on our ego, overcoming our, our uh, you know, lower self, our, our animal nature, our emotions, our thoughts. You know, we're, this is the final initiation. We all have to just learn how to be masters. You know, so, and we are, we're heading there, you know. We're all evolving and we're becoming more um, enlightened. Yeah, it seems like it's moving at a pretty fast pace. I mean, the news to me is actually absolutely staggering. Uh, you know, every day I see I see things that are just amazing. Like I, I'm seeing the whole economy turn over. You know, the 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 nations that are operating outside of the cabal influence are all coming together. I mean, it's it, it's really happening on so many levels. It's very exciting. Yeah, it is. <sighs> So, so my, my people all want to know, you know, dates, you know, when is this going to happen? I don't, you know, flash. yeah, the solar flash. I mean, I'm sure you get this question all the time. I'm, I personally am not, I don't feel that concerned because like, I feel like, you know, I have more work to do on my, I feel like everything is happening in, in God's time, but um, can you give my, uh, my friends from my uh, Kabbalah guru family, like some kind of idea of the time frame of all this? Um, well, depending on, okay, how can I say it? According to the ancient calendars, the ones that were, that are actually aligned with the natural cycles of the universe that, uh, are able to, um, see where we're at in the, uh, in the grand scheme of things as our solar system, you know, moves around the galactic core. Um, it's the time frame is any time between now and 2020, I would have to say 2028 latest, but earliest 2024. Yeah. For, so, for the for the flash, you mean it would be twenty twenty four. Exactly. Yeah. And that's that's the original vision I got when I when I uh, wrote Cosmic Origin. So I'm gonna stick to that original vision. Okay, so he, here's another set of questions. How do we develop our ability to to do to vision things the way you do i mean i know you say meditation but the question and the question also is wh at what point will we make contact with our star brothers and sisters so what at what when does that when does that seem like it's going to happen well from behind the scenes uh our brothers and sisters from the advanced worlds um known as the federation they're already working with the Earth Alliance to uh, prepare the Earth for first contact because within the private sector, uh, we've already made first contact, obviously. You know, we have these breakaway groups have existing have existing since the 1950s and 60s. And so they're now just, I guess, you know, they've been waiting for the right time for the collective of humanity on the surface level to reach a certain level of consciousness. Uh, to be ready to, I guess, to understand, you know, extraterrestrial civilizations. And, and they believe that we are already there. So uh, part of the disclosure, part of the Nisera Kisera, um, fi new financial system is going to lead to first contact because a lot of that stuff was actually uh, developed by extraterrestrials, the quantum financial system, you know, and so on and so forth. These are all structures that that exist throughout the uh, the many worlds within our galaxy and other galaxies. So it's it's already in progress. You know, first contact is imminent. Imminent. So what will, is, inevitable. <laughs> is inevitable, right? What well, I'm sorry about the noise. Uh, it's Brooklyn, but what um, what does that look like? Do, I mean, do the uh, upper dimensional beings do they have the ability to just kind of appear physically or they're going to come through our thoughts how does first contact manifest it's because we are going to be um, going into the fourth and fifth dimensional reality uh the veil is going to be lifted and then that's when everyone is going to see ships and mass sightings everywhere around the world and so those ships those ships we will be will be seen before the solar flash 
Um, I think it's going to happen right when the solar flash takes place. The motherships are going to be all visible for everyone to see. And also, we're going to start seeing Pleiadians, um, Arcturians, Lyrans, and different star races that are already here walking among us. Because once the veil is lifted and the Earth is fully anchored in the fourth and fifth dimensional reality, uh, we're going to be interacting with these extraterrestrials because they're already all around us. We just don't see them because they're in a different dimension. So when we enter their dimension, which is already here, um, it's all going to be visible to us. So, so how do I invent? Let's say I want to have contact with um, with our brothers and sisters from the stars. How, how could could one initiate a contact just personally? Just say, okay, man, let's let's hang. You know, I know you're here. Um, show show me yourself so we can, uh, you know, we have a cup of coffee together, whatever. You know, how do we do that? Or is that not that's not proper etiquette? I can't. I, I don't know. You know, I'm I'm asking. I, I don't know. I think that physical, it's going to have to wait till the veil is fully lifted. And it's so in order for us to have coffee with them or a conversation like me and you are, uh, we have to be in the same dimensional frequency reality. Otherwise, it's like tapping into the wrong radio station, you know. So they're, they're waiting for us, you know, to collectively be fully uh, anchored in the fifth dimension. So it would have to be a collective a collective um, awakening to, to get to that that point. Exactly, yes. Cool. Okay, so I can't just say, you know, come on for coffee. I have to like, uh, I have to wait till we all wake up, which is probably makes sense. Well, there's some people that have the abilities to already, you know, have coffee and interact with extraterrestrials and, and, and aboard these motherships or these other ships. But uh, that's just something that, you know, they're born with, you know. So some people have that ability already and some people don't. Right. Okay. Uh, so it's something to look forward to. I mean, in the future, we'll all have that, that ability. Yeah. In the future, we're all going to be walking and talking to uh, many dimensional beings in the near future. Nice. Yeah. It, it says, um, it, it says in the, in the, uh, in scriptures that, you know, the sun will be unsheathed and the, the evil ones will hide in the clefts of rocks and the righteous people will be healed. Is that kind of like a metaphor for what's going on now? Absolutely. Yes. It, um, when the shift takes place, there's going to be massive miracles for the righteous. The righteous are going to be exalted and uplifted, and the wicked are going to be exterminated and eliminated. D does any of that, I mean, I... Yeah, go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, the, these prophecies are echoed in every ancient tradition, not just in the Judeo-Christian tradition, but you know, even in the Hindu texts of the Mahabharata and the Vedas, um, the uh, the Quran. They, they all talk about this. The ancient uh manuscripts. They all they all talk about the uh, the solar flash, the shift of ages, and the exaltation of the righteous and the elimination of evil. But it's known under different names. How much, okay, so how much of our religious text has been influenced by the cabal, has been perverted by the cabal? I'll, I'll, I mean, are I would all the, say all, most of it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, most of it, because even even before the, the actual uh, editing of the Bible, which happened in, you know, 1700 years ago during the Council of Nicaea, uh, we still had the Sadducees and the Pharisees that were also modifying and editing the original texts that come from the from you know elijah and and and, and uh and uh ezekiel and you know and the prophets of old um so i would have to say that yeah it's 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 been edited a lot <laughs> over and over and over right yeah. i mean yeah i'm sorry go ahead when oh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were like the they were like the, what the cabal was in, in in you know in those days 2000 years ago it's interesting because I know they, they like to mess with language. It seems that the cabal has a big, um, they like to play with words and uh, confuse us with, uh, with language. Do you think, I mean, I, I don't know, this is kind of a loaded question, but do you think like the Babylonian, I, I've heard that the Babylonian Talmud has been, was infiltrated to some degree by the, by the cabal. Does that resonate? The Babylonian Talmud? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's true. 
because they 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 tend to play with language and nuance and um they like to control us with uh you know with language really i mean is that is that their like do do does the enemy have like high, obviously i mean they have high tech they they're like the the reptilians and those people are they they've always had a, a much more advanced technology than we have well then we based on our current level of technology which is a type zero yes but comparing them to technologies of a type one or a type two it's about a and, and for the most part the uh, reptilians or particularly the draco they've mo they've mo mostly been uh, using ai and nanotechnology more than anything so they're very invested in artificial intelligence so that's that's the main you, you said before that's like the main conflict but you know gog and mogog versus the humans yeah. so even the draco themselves were our puppets and minions of the ai okay so that's um so what what can we look forward to in the near like in the near term before the solar flash what what kind of what kind of miracles or what kind of transformations should we be ready for what what should we be looking for what kind of signs can we see the collapse of western society as we know it the fall of you know the current political social and economic structure so that's going to be a, the, the first thing that's going to happen and, and, and that's going to lead to for the first contact right and and you're saying that that will probably be at the same time as the solar flash I think I think same time, yeah. Because the so, solar flash is 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 the the demarcation between the age of Pisces and the age of Aquarius. It's what causes, you know, the age of Pisces to to um, no longer be here, and then it allows the age of Aquarius to come into being. But but that's gonna that's gonna be fully manifest by two thousand and four, probably. Two thousand twenty four, according to my original vision and based on on my in my research yes but uh technically no later than 2027 20 28. uh-huh but in the meantime we're going to see first i mean it looks it looks to me like the the collapse of the civilization is somewhat imminent i mean it doesn't seem like it's going to be doesn't seem like it's years away it seems like it's weeks or months away once i think once the information about the other side is revealed it will you know, trigger a mass awakening, let's hope. Yeah, I believe so. It's that's gonna be the first catalyst of the of the um, mass awakening is is when the people of the earth become informed on the extraterrestrial connection, uh, and also on and on really on what's been really going on for thousands of years behind their back. And that's right. gonna be a huge, huge awakening that's gonna be taking place. Right, so, so for the my, masses, for the masses, right? Uh, the star the seeds masses. already know what's coming. Yes, the star seeds are the ones that are bringing the awakening. They they're helping in the disclosure you know, through uh, the distribution of uh, information and stuff through the internet. You know, uh, they're spreading information, and that's what's allowing many people to awaken and you know deprogram from the matrix. It, it said it, they're saying that um, once people wake up, they're going to be really freaked out. Are you seeing that as well? Like the normies? Yeah, the normies are. Yeah, because it's like everything that they've ever been taught is is actually going to be proven wrong. So it's it's going to you know it's it's going to shatter their cognitive dissonance. You know, it's going to be major cognitive dissonance. So we'll see how it all plays out. Yeah. And and we should look forward to. I mean, I'm I'm telling I'm telling my uh, community, or we're telling each other that we should be there for the others. We have to be there for the normies, even though they gave us a hard time. Uh, they're going to need our help soon. Yeah, they are. They'll yeah, need we us. Will. You know, we will like we, we will be like way showers and teachers to them. But this happens. Will, will they? The normies are going to be. Saying, Don't be apologizing. Sorry, sorry for calling you crazy, but uh, 
you were right this whole time. <laughs> but but this is going to be after the initial shock. Like it's it's going to be the first shock is going to just t send them over, like send them a bit over the edge. They're saying that millions of people will be protesting and they'll be really upset for a short time. They said a short time, which I think is hopeful. You, you see that as well? Perhaps. So, yeah, you know, people are going to be in shock. So I, I, I can understand why there's going to be some protesting. But, you know, we'll, I guess we're going to all find out and see how it all unfolds. Yeah. The good news is, is that, you know, the, the old Babylonian system that has been ruling this world for thousands of years is crashing and it's, and it's no longer in power. So, you know, it's also going to be a, a, a time to celebrate, to celebrate our, our, our liberation, our victory. Uh, over darkness, over you know corruption, over injustice. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, <looking> me too. <laughs> me too. So it's it's party time. It's go time. I mean, we're really even though we may not experience full you know 5D consciousness where we're you know imagining our own uh, houses and moving in, we'll be we'll be busy with really beautiful you know i'm i'm going back to the I, i've been talking about the phrase be fruitful and multiply that that in this in this place in this era we should continue to be fruitful and multiply not just you know making kids but that we 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 should start getting used to being like creators yeah yeah because that's what we're going to be doing in the fifth dimension we're going to be creating we're all going to be you know, creating at will. Um, and as we move beyond the fifth dimension, um, we're just going to be using more genetic material and more power. So, you know, one of these days, eventually, we're all going to be creators of our own universe. <laughs> we're going to be, instead of manifesting homes, uh, we're going to be manifesting cosmos. <laughs> the, this, the sense of time, like the, the, the timeline, like, like, how do you, like like how do you quantify how long it's going to take us to go from you know liberation of the planet to becoming galaxies? Is that eons, or will time will time be different in the new in the new world? That's I guess that's my question. Well, yeah, because we're going to go beyond time. There will be no more time, and in the galaxy, everything's happening all simultaneously. The liberation of the Earth and the overthrow of the Cabal is also the overthrow of the Orion Empire in our galaxy. So as I speak right now, our galaxy is under, it's going under, um, there's inter uh, I guess galactic trials that are taking place, uh, but it's also happening in other galaxies. You know, the galactic courts are already arresting many of the uh, reptilians and the insectoids and the grace that have been, you know, you know part of the Luciferian rebellion, and they're all going to be facing trial. And so it's not just happening here, it's happening everywhere in the cosmos, as I speak. When you say we won't have time, what, is that, what does that look like? What do you, how, how could you explain that to us? Well, we're going to be immortal. We're going to be living forever. So we're not going to be aging anymore. Uh, we're not going to be seeing things like from one point to the next. We're just going to be living in the eternal now. Nice, nice. So we, we won't really have to worry about anything will just be basically creating creating and eventually will i mean and we won't have a sense of like man it took me so long to go from creating houses to creating universes that'll all be kind of like a a simultaneous uh creation a simultaneous explosion of um creativity yeah well as we use more percentage and as we go higher in uh, dimension, as we continue to progress in our spiritual evolution through our consciousness, um, we, yes, we're going to learn how to terraform Earth. We're going to learn how to create stars, galaxies, and universes. That's where we're all heading. You know, so we're, we're going to be eventually the new creator gods of universes in the new, you know, cycle of things. We're going to be replacing the old ones <laughs> because in, in a way, it's like we're all interconnected. In order for our the creators of our universe or the creator gods of universes to evolve to the next level, we have to evolve to their level. And that's just how it's always been. So we're, we came to this earth to, uh, to prepare, to train, to become like gods and goddesses. 
So they can't move up to the next level until we take their place. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. Well, I, I, I think I've really, you know, I, I think I feel like I've um, gotten answers to a lot of my questions. I know I, whenever I, I see you, I, I feel like there's more. Is there, are there any general messages that you want to just give um, without, you know, just message to the world and to, you know, it's, it's evolving so fast. I mean, I'm seeing things moving countries, countries, uh, dissolving i mean the leadership just dissolving before your eyes i mean things that you know not just countries but you know the whole financial system is just it, it seems like me it's just you know it's just like a house of cards and it's just going to be so is there any like like you know just a message that you want to just um broadcast in 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 the last couple of minutes Just to stay centered, you know, because changes is, is coming. It's inevitable. Um, the plan to liberate the earth is going to be shocking to most, but for those that are awakened, it's going to be a sense of of uh, of relief. And so, I have nothing to worry about. You know, don't entertain any, any negative thoughts, any negative timelines, because in every timeline, the forces of light checkmate in the darkness. So, you know, God is in control. You know, there's no need to worry at this time. You know, just this is this is a time to celebrate. So if you could already, you know, imagine what a heaven on earth would be like and feel what a, a heaven on, on earth would be like, then and this is a time to just, just uh, you know, stay in that emotion and stay in that thought. And don't let anything uh, distract you from that. Right. Just keep moving forward. Just keep doing what we're doing and radiate love, radiate light. Keep, you know, exactly. keep a creative mind. Yeah. And just and just know that we're even though it looks it looks like things are kind of in a in a dark place. It's really just the darkness before the dawn. Absolutely. The storm before the calm or the calm before the storm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm I'm good to go. So yeah, unless you have anything else to say, let's just uh, you know till next time. I mean, I really really appreciate you spending time with me, and I I, I want to thank you also for all the other. You know, we're just like little guys. You know, all the, the you know you're known for giving interviews to lots and lots of people, and it's just such a beautiful thing. Um, you know, I can't thank you enough for for helping us uh, get through this transition. Well, thank you, Kabbalah Guru, for also doing what you're doing with your, you know, spreading of love and truth. Uh, we're all doing this together. You know, we're a team. So um, as much as I am a, a teacher, I'm also a student. We're all learning together. <laughs> Thanks, Ishmael. I really appreciate it. You should have only blessings and light and love. And uh, till next time, my brother, be well. Likewise. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.